All right, so we started these notes yesterday, correct? So today will be the last day of these notes, um, so you can consider it part two, I guess. Um, we've really covered all of the factoring, the polynomials here. The last thing we just need to talk about is our difference of squares. So this was our last set of examples, correct, that we did, I believe. Okay. So let's get into the difference of squares. I need you to write these steps down. So this is a difference of squares pattern. It's two things being squared or that you can take the square root of. Difference means subtraction, so you're subtracting those two squares. That's why it's called difference of squares. So step one, we first want to make sure that you have an actual difference of squares. There must be a subtraction sign between your two terms, and you can take the square root of both terms. If there's not a subtraction sign in the middle, it's not a difference of squares, or if I cannot take the square root of one or both of my terms, then it's also not a difference of squares. After we first make sure that it is an actual difference of squares problem, step two, we can use the following rule to factor. a squared minus b squared equals a plus b times a minus b. The a values here, I get that just from taking the square root of a squared. So I take the square root of my first term, I get that a value. b comes from me taking the square root of b squared. So take the root, square root of b squared, that gives me my b values. Make one a plus sign, one a minus sign, you've got your problem. This rule, when you have it uh, memorized, is, makes it pretty easy to factor for us. And then step three, we can check our work using FOIL just like we did yesterday. If I FOIL it out and I get back to my original polynomial, it means I have uh, factored correctly. Are there any questions about any of these steps? Okay, I'll give you a couple more minutes to write this down. I'll kind of go over the rule again, just in case you were writing down and couldn't pay attention. But a squared minus b squared would be our polynomial. So what I do is I take the square root of my first term, and it gives me my a values. I take the square root of my second term, and it gives me my b values. Make one a plus sign, one a minus sign, you got your problem factor. Okay? Let's go ahead and move on and look at some examples here. Number one, n squared minus 64. n squared minus 64. Step one, we first need to make sure that it is a difference of squares problem. Is there a minus sign between my two terms? Yes, it is a subtraction problem. So that checks off a box there. Can I take the square root of my first term in squared? Got to think back to square roots here. Can I take the square root of n squared? And get a nice clean, well, it would be a variable in this case, but. Do you guys remember how to take square roots with variables with exponents? Remember, divide the exponent by the index. What's the index of a square root? 2. It's 2 divisible by 2. Yep, so can I take the square root of n squared? Yes, I can. Can I take the square root of 64? Yes, I can. So is this a difference of squares problem? Yes, it is. Once again, our rule is a squared minus b squared equals a plus b times a minus b. So, like I said, I need to take the square root of my first term. What would the square root of n squared be? Into the what power? 
to the first power, right? Because we take the exponent and divide it by the index. What's 2 divided by 2? 1. So I get into the first power or just n. So that's going to take the first spot of each set of parentheses. Now I take the square root of 64. What's the square root of 64? 8. That'll take the second slot. Make 1 a plus, 1 a minus. There's our factored form. We okay with that for number 1? Not bad? Hopefully. Okay. Number 2. Let's check and make sure it's a difference of squares. Do I have a, a subtraction sign between my two terms? Yes, I do. Can I take the square root of my first term? 1. What number times itself gives me 1? One? 1. One. I can take the square root of 1, right? Can I take the square root of 49y squared? Yeah. This is a difference of squares. So I'm going to draw my parentheses. What's the square root of 1? 1. What's the square root of 49y squared? 7. Just 7y, right? Square root of 49 is 7. Square root of y squared is y. So square root of 49y squared would be 7y. <clears throat> one's a plus, one's a minus. There's factor 4. How are we feeling about difference of squares so far? The hardest part is probably being able to identify if it is a difference of squares. And we got to kind of brush up on our uh, square rootings, square root skills. Uh, number three. Is this a subtraction problem? Yes. Can I take the square root <clears throat> of 64u squared? Yes. Can I take the square root of v squared? Yes. Is this a difference of squares? Yes, it is. What would be the square root of 64u squared? 8u. What's the square root of v squared? V. One's a plus, one's a minus. Any questions up to this point? Okay, y'all try four and five on your own. Try four and five on your own. <clears throat> Okay, let's look at this real quick. Number four, is it a subtraction problem? Yes, it is. Can I take the square root of my first term? Yep. Can I take the square root of my second term? Yep. So what would the square root of 64m to the fourth be? 8m squared. Very good. Remember, to take the square root of a variable with an exponent, Divide it by the index of your radical. So 4 divided by 2 gives me 2. That's how I got the m squared. What would the square root of 9n squared give me? 3n. 1's a plus. 1's a minus. There's your factored form. We okay with 4? Can I erase 4 and give myself some more room for number 5? Everyone got 4 written down? Any questions on it? Okay. Number five, is it a subtraction problem? Yes. Can I take the square root of my first term and get a nice clean whole number slash variable? I cannot. Can I take the square root of my second term? No. Any ideas what I might need to do here? I forgot to mention this yesterday. I wish I would have mentioned it yesterday, but I completely forgot. The very first thing we need to do whenever we're factoring using any form is to look for a GCF of my whole polynomial. Okay? So here, looking at my two terms, what would be the biggest number that goes into 18 and 50?
It's not a very big number. Yeah. Two. So I can factor out a two here. Do they have any x's in common? No. Two times what would give me 18x squared? Two times what would give me 18x squared? 9x squared. Two times what would give me negative 50? Negative 25. So, I factored out my GCF. So today, start looking for the GCF before you do anything else. Okay? <clears throat> now, in the parentheses, do I have a subtraction problem? Yeah. Yep. Can I take the square root of my first term? Yep. Can I take the square root of my second term? Yep. Now, in the parentheses, I do have a difference of squares, so I can factor that even further. Do not forget about your two outside. That has to be a part of your answer, otherwise it's wrong. Draw your parentheses. What's the square root of 9x squared? 3x. What's the square root of 25? 5. One's a plus, one's a minus. Everyone okay with that? So... Like I said, always, always, always get in the habit of looking for a greatest common factor first and foremost before you doing any, do anything else. Any questions on number five? Can I move on to my last set of examples? Last set here. 80 into the fourth minus 125 in squared. Is it a subtraction problem? Yes. yes, it is. Can I take the square root of 80 into the fourth and get a nice clean whole number? I cannot, can I? Nothing times itself gives me 80, whole number wise. So, what do we need to look for first? GCF. So, what's the biggest number that goes into 80 and 125? I believe it is 5. Do we have any ends in common? Yeah. How many? Two. Two. So 5 in <clears throat> squared would be my GCF. Are we okay with how we got that? <clears throat> 5 times what gives me 80? <clears throat> 16. How many more ends do I need in this first term? Two. Two more. Because I need four total for my first term. I'm distributing two of them in, so I need two more to make it four. Five times what gives me negative 125? Say it again. Negative 25. Do I need any more ends here in this last term? No. So there's my GCF factored out. Now, can we take the square root of the first term? Yep. Can we take the square root of the second term? Yep. We have a difference of squares in the parentheses now. Do not forget about 5 in squared. That's got to be a part of your answer. What's the square root of 16 in squared? 4 in Square root of 25, 5, 1's a plus, 1's a minus. And there is number 6 factored completely. Questions on number 6. How are we feeling still? Always look for the GCF first and foremost, okay? Number 7. Let's look for a GCF. What's the biggest number that goes into 8 and 32? 8. Do they have any X's in common? No. No. Do they have any Y's in common? Yeah. How many? Just one. So 8Y would be my GCF of these two terms. So 8Y, 
times what would give me 8x squared y? 1 what? 1 what? 1x squared, which I don't have to have that 1. I can just put x squared. <laughs> if you need that 1 there, go ahead and put it. 8y times x squared gives me 8x squared y. 8 times what gives me negative 32? Negative 4. How many more y's do I need? 2. Two. Any questions how I factored out the GCF? In the parentheses, do I now have a difference of squares? Yes. Yeah, I can take the square root of the first term, I can take the square root of the second term, and it is a subtraction problem. Put my 8y first, draw my parentheses. What's the square root of x squared? x. x. What's the square root of 4y squared? 2y. One's a plus, one's a minus. Questions on seven. Kind of getting the hang of it. Factor out of GCF. See if you have a difference of squares. Take the square root of the first term, square root of the second term. One's a plus, one's a minus. Okay, last one, number eight. Well, my coefficients are one, right? It's so the biggest number that goes into one is one. Do we have any m's in common? How many? One. Do we have any n's in common? How many? One. So m n is my GCF here. How many more m's do I need in the parentheses for this first term? Two, Two more. Do I need more n's for this first term? No. Do I need any more n's for the second term? Um, do I need more n's for the second term? So what would go here? Minus 1. mn times negative 1 gives me the negative mn. Okay? In the parentheses, do I have a difference of squares? Can I take the square root of my first term? Yes. Can I take the square root of my second term? Yep. Is it a subtraction problem? Yep. Don't forget about M, N in your answer, your GCF. What's the square root of M squared? M. What's the square root of 1? One? 1. One's a plus, 1's a minus. Any questions how I got that for 8? If you're ever unsure of your answer, what can you always do to check it? Foil it back out, multiply it back out. <coughs> In this case, I would probably foil first and then distribute my m in into the new polynomial. I should get back to my original polynomial. How do we feel about factoring polynomials like we did yesterday? Using our little factor chart. Make sure on your assignment that I see your work. And you showing your work is creating that uh, factor chart. I want to see your chart on every single problem, even if you can get the numbers in your head. I want to see your chart on your paper. Make sure on every single problem you're looking for a GCF first and foremost. Okay? Are there any questions for me before I end the recording? We got a worksheet today.